My name is Julian Chambliss. I'm associate professor and chair of the Department of History, also coordinator of the African African American Studies program at Rollins College in Orlando. As a kid, I was a really nerdy kid, nerdy adult, nerdy kid. Being in Jacksonville, it was somewhat odd. Like I did pretty well in school and that was helpful. I grew up on the north side, which is sort of lower income population. A lot of history there though, you know, if you sort of like delve into the history of Jacksonville. Atlanta had Sweet Auburn Avenue. Jacksonville had Ashley Street, right? Like a huge center of African-American economic and sort of social activism. Went to Jacksonville University as undergrad. And I was always getting A's in history class and the history professor was like, you should become a history major. Like, I can't do anything with that. What am I gonna do with that? What am I gonna do with history? I know exactly what students say. I know exactly what they feel. What am I gonna do with that? I always say to students, this is something I do say in class, history is happening now. So when you were talking about contemporary landscape, that landscape is really shaped by the past. The decisions that people made 50, 60, 70, a thousand years ago, you're living those decisions. You can ignore that or you can sort of engage with that. But the engagement is important because if you realize that, what does that mean about the future? What does that mean about the decisions you make now Fast forward 100 years or 150 years or 10 years, what, what kind of world are you going to be contributing to with your decisions right now? And so the relationship between the past, the present and the future is one of like a constant dialogue to me. My colleague, Rachel Simmons, she conceptualized a sort of green art project that uses the iconography of the polar bear as a way to sort of talk about climate change and sort of build climate awareness. And so I wrote the script for the first installation because it is not, strictly speaking, a comic book. It actually blends element of a comic book structure and narrative with wall-mounted fine arts installation. And so we've done a, a number of things. We've shown it in museums. We've done it at academic settings as well. But we've also done a lot of community-based work. So this last year, we really spent a lot of time working on trying to create ways for kids to sort of learn about environmental questions through Future Bear. There's a transformation taking place in society and the media sort of struggles with catching up. And I think this is at the root of a lot of like the tension that we see around media products. And comics are interesting in a sense because they are such iconic imagery with a long and sort of like culturally infused narrative, right? They, you know, comics change with the reader. If you read a comic in 1930, it looks like 1930, you read a comic now, it looks like now. But some of those characters are the same. So you have a kind of mediation between the way society is and the way society ought to be in terms of aspirations that are sort of infused into characters. And so the representation question lags behind because they were created at a period where like representation was very narrow. And any introduction of something that's different, so like a black character, like the Black Panther, which is the first black superhero that comes in 1966. And I often point out to students when you think about that, like think about the context there, the context really matters. 1966 is after the civil rights movement has reached a sort of crescendo, it's after the 1964 Civil Rights Act, after the 1965 Voting Rights Act. This is a moment where the federal government has said quite clearly African Americans deserve the rights that are afforded all American citizens and we are going to enforce that. And so of course the Marvel comics come up with a black superhero, but not an American, he's an African. Right, that the first African American superhero doesn't come to a couple of years later, the Falcon. So you, you see that there's a realization that the world is changing and you have to introduce these characters and do that. And you can see that happening now. We are rapidly approaching majority minority. So by 2050, maybe even by 2045, 2040, depending on, on how you do the numbers, we'll be majority minority. So the media now the comic books now are struggling with that reality. You see success, I think, sometimes in people trying to, to incorporate this vision. Like I look to Marvel Comics with their Miss Marvel. It's a Pakistani teenager. And you see the introduction of, again, the Falcon as Captain America taking over the job. Um, and even in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the decision to bring the Black Panther to the screen. These are all indications of the reality of, of diversity. And one of the things that we, we sort of have to like recognize that is the older people have to recognize is that diversity doesn't necessarily mean as it's often characterized as someone's losing something. It could be seen as an enhancement, right? It's an enhancement of the American experience. And that's at the core of diversity's benefits. Like if you really think about it, the United States always benefited from this enhancement that comes from diverse people from around the world coming to the country. So these are the things that are sort of like in the ether while 
we debate at this sort of like higher level and you look at like a figure like Donald Trump, who is speaking to older people who don't necessarily understand this transformation as clearly. And so the fears that they have of displacement or even this, this sense of like rising racial tension, it's really a question of like the public sphere being dominated by one group and now the public sphere, including more and more people who are not that group. And those people have issues with the way the public sphere is being defined. One element of Chris Rock's hosting the Oscars, like he pointed out, you know, like this Oscar so white thing, like, you know, this only 88th year. So pretty much 70, 71, 72 years, there was no black, right? Because that, that was not the, the landscape. And so, you know, now we're reaching a point where like that kind of issue, hey, how come we're not being represented in the award ceremony is a real issue. And that in a weird way is a sign of success, right? You, you've, you've reached a kind of saturation in terms of media where like, you know, these deficits in terms of representation are becoming painfully clear to people. And that makes for a complicated new experience, but that speaks to the globalization that is the reality of the world we live in.